U.S. hands off. U.S. hands off. U.S. hands off. All right, well, welcome, everybody. Hopefully, you're happy to be here. I'm happy to see you here. I have the benefit of being able to see all of you and to know some of you and to see that people have really come from, quite frankly, every part of the country to be here today to say, hands off Venezuela, no war, no sanctions, no coup. I won't shout out everyone, but I see people from, from Georgia, people from Chicago. I've talked to people from Albuquerque, from California. I came from Baltimore, from Washington, D.C. I mean, really, uh, it, it's an unbelievable breadth and depth of people who are here today. So on behalf of the Answer Coalition, I really want to thank you for being here today. I think it's obviously critically important at this stage in the game. We've seen that the United States is doing everything they possibly can to push forward a coup in Venezuela. And we've reached what maybe is one of the most critical stages. And I think it's very clear to those of us who have been following it, where they want to create a dirty war. They want to foment unrest. They want to launch whatever sort of underhanded attack they can to try to pit the Venezuelan people against each other, to get them to fight each other, to attack each other, to create chaos, chaos that they can then use as a pretext for further intervention. We saw that at the so-called self-appointed president's rally in Caracas last week, people were even yelling at him, we want a U.S. intervention, the handful of people who showed, maybe 500. Uh, we want U.S. intervention. There's a, a website there, Dollar Today. It's a, a criminal website that tries to manipulate the exchange rate that has been putting out memes of drone attacks and asking for intervention and U.S. imperialist intervention, military intervention. And we've seen this story so many times before, certainly in Iraq, certainly in Libya. We know the script, the millions who have died, the tens of millions who have had their lives almost completely destroyed, the complete and total humanitarian disasters this has caused, the immigrants who are dying now trying to travel across the Mediterranean Sea to Europe because of what has happened there with intervention, those strewn all across the Middle East who wonder where their next meal is, where they're going to live, how they're going to survive. Now they want to bring that blueprint to Latin America, and I think it's very fitting that we're here to say no to that regime change agenda. Not in our name will you overthrow and promote a coup in Venezuela. We have some fantastic people we want you to hear from here today. And first I want to bring up someone who really is truly a personal hero of mine. And I, I said to her that this is coming full circle. I first heard of her when I was in Venezuela in 2005, but someone who has helped lead movements for years here against interventions, abuses, coups, the military industrial complex, the Bush administration, the Obama administration, the Trump administration, whoever is pushing these kind of policies, please give a warm welcome to Cindy Sheehan from March on the Pentagon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here to be in solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution and with and with Venezuela and and with the people of Venezuela. And I'd like to thank Answer for holding this very important demonstration. It's imp it's important for the people of Venezuela to see us here to know that not every American is a dumb shit, right? <laughs> that not every Amer are you North American, right? I was with, I was with um, Hugo Chavez one time. I was with Hugo Chavez one time, and um, he said, Cindy, I don't hate you in the United States. We're all Americans. We're all in this together. And Hugo Chavez proved that he was in it together with the people of the world. He, you know, everybody in the bourgeois um, pol political parties here in the United States, they're calling Maduro a 
an evil dictator. I'm here to say no. He is a president of the people who has been legitimately elected several times by, by acclamation by the people of Venezuela. However, they're saying things like, oh, Maduro won't take humanitarian aid from the United States. Well, why does he have to? Why does he have to take a Trojan horse full of aid? Probably, probably poison food and weapons to use against the Bolivarian Revolution, right? But Hugo Chavez sent aid all over the world. He sent aid here to people in the Northeast to get low, low um, cost heating oil, but no other oil company would do that. Every oil company was asked to provide free or low cost heating oil, Sitco was the only one that stood up. I'm proud of the people of Venezuela for resisting the maniacs over here. <clears throat> and Hugo Chavez, I'm a Chavista. Long live Hugo Chavez. Long live Hugo Chavez. Long live the Bolivarian Revolution. <clears throat> but the one thing he did that was the most important more important than free health care, more important than education, more important than housing or food, was he empowered the people of Venezuela and gave everybody there a voice. He gave the poorest people a voice. They wrote their constitution, they will defend their constitution, they will defend their revolution. And Trump and the neocons in his regime and the Democrats and Republicans in Congress don't know who they're fucking with. They're fucking with the people of Venezuela who have been empowered, who have taken their lives into their own hands, and they will not go down quietly. And we need to be in solidarity with them and all the people of the world that the U.S. is occupying, bombing, helping occupy and bomb, Gaza, Syria, right. Yemen, right. Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, possibly Iran, possibly even Venezuela. We stand with the people in solidarity, saying no U.S. invasions, no coups, no bombing. The U.S. just get the F out of everywhere. Right. Thank you. Right. Give it up again for Cindy Sheehan. One of the biggest issues that you all know is the, the, the unbelievable lies that are being told to back this intervention, just outright lies. I mean, we saw the New York Times try to cover their own behind uh, by coming and saying that the whole government burning the aid issue was fake, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. And it's hard sometimes to think of where to go and what to do and where can you look, but there are a lot of media outlets, independent grassroots, working off whatever they can to break through the information blockade on this issue, on many other issues. And one of those websites is Consortium News, which I suggest you check out. And I hope you give a warm welcome here to Joe Loria, who's the editor-in-chief of Consortium News. Gotcha. One of the first times I came up on the right wing. Okay. <laughs> Not the left. All right, it is said that Richard Nixon in that house over there looked through the curtains as he heard cries from Lafayette Park protesting an earlier imperial war. A half century later, we're here protesting the next one. If you were to read or watch corporate media alone, you would think that overthrowing another inconvenient elected government was all about liberating the Venezuelan people. As if the organizers and promoters of this coup care about the American people, let alone the Venezuelan. Like all imperial adventures, this one serves an elite. Their sycophantic supporters in government and the media, they reap residual benefits. As it's been doing now for 13 years, there's one publication to turn to to fill the void led by establishment reporting about what the U.S. government is doing. And that's why the founder and publisher of that publication remains arbitrarily detained in an embassy in the heart of the capital 
of a former imperial power, a power that stands ready to turn him over to a courtroom across the river in Alexandria to stand trial for the crime of publishing. Already back in an Alexandrian cell for more than a week is the whistleblower Chelsea Manning, imprisoned for refusing to testify against the journalist and the publication that released her prima facie evidence of a U.S. war crime in Iraq. The, the purpose, the perpetrators of that crime that she revealed remain free. The person who revealed that crime remains in jail. We've already learned more about the plot against Venezuela from WikiLeaks than anything you get from a complicit media. A 2010 memo published by WikiLeaks, for instance, reveals that Canvas, a US-funded regime change NGO, spoke of the potential collapse of Venezuela's electrical grid as a watershed event that would likely have the impact of galvanizing public unrest in a way that no opposition group could ever hope to generate. We know what happened last week in Venezuela. It's revelations like this about interfering with U.S. imperial policy, revelations that interfere with that U.S. imperial policy that led Mike Pompeo to call WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence agency. Interfering with U.S. imperial policy is why we need to continue to stand with WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, and Chelsea Manning, and with the people of Venezuela. Thank you. Hands off Venezuela! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. How's everybody feeling? All right. Right. I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, all the way from Chicago, Anna Santoyo from the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Let's make some noise! My name is Anna, and I came here on a bus from, uh, sorry, I came here on the bus with Answer Chicago. On that bus, we have people from Indiana, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Michigan. All right. We organized and came here to say to the U.S. war machine, hands off Venezuela. We came here to tell the people of Venezuela that we are here with you, that our struggle your struggle is our struggle. Tu lucha is nuestra lucha. All right. We have more in common with the working class that is out in the hundreds of thousands defending Maduro, Chavez, and the Bolivarian movement. Why? They continue to build a revolution that has built new homes for everyone, eliminated illiteracy, has free education, health care, and recognizes oppressed sectors of society like indigenous people, Afro-Latinos, and women. The, U the U.S. is using the same playbook they used in Iraq and Libya, and we are not going to let that happen to Venezuela. The people of the U.S. do not want war. U.S. wars do not benefit working class people. War only benefits the handful of people controlling the wealth that workers created. They have no right to talk about humanitarian aid when they continue to terrorize poor black and Latino neighborhoods where police kill our young people, close our schools, and do nothing about lead in the water in Flint and Chicago right. and all other all across the co That's country. Right. That's right. Why can't we get humanitarian aid in our neighborhoods? Where are the shipments of food and basic necessities going to the south side of Chicago? One in five people in Chicago live without adequate food. There's an estimated 20,000 homeless children going to Chicago public schools. The enemies we face are on Wall Street and the Pentagon. That's right. From Chicago, Washington, D.C. to Caracas, we stand against U.S. imperialism and we will put an end to U.S. supremacy and white supremacy once and for all. That's right. Hands up, Venezuela. Hasta la victoria siempre. All right. Hands off! 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 Next, I want to bring up 
another person doing a lot to try to break through this media blockade, Jim Cavanaugh of the Polemicist. Please welcome Jim. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to speak here. Here's the bad news. I've been to a lot of these things, uh, starting with Vietnam, going through the 80s with Central America, Nicaragua, El Salvador, those criminal aggressions. Then in 2003, I was part, louder? Then in 2003, I was among the tens of millions of people in the world who demonstrated to try and prevent the war in Iraq. I've been to a lot of these things because the wars never stop. I'm going to keep coming back because the wars keep coming back, okay? Through Republican and Democratic administrations, through snow and sleet, through sickness and health, the, the, the criminal aggressions of America keep coming, okay? That's because we're an imperialist country. Okay, I got it. And that's because as the captain of imperialism in the world, the United States has the job of protecting the interest and investments of its own wealthy elite and of ensuring the rule of the wealthy elites everywhere else in the world against the popular uprisings and popular forces like those of the Bolivarian Revol Revolution in, in Venezuela. And all of that requires constant aggression and violence. So we keep coming back. So the bad news is we're going to have to keep coming back. Right. Short of very radical changes that are not on the political horizon, American imperialism isn't going to stop. And that doesn't really, no matter who's in the halls of Congress or, the, or who's in the White House. But here's the good news. A lot of people, not just the people who are here, but a lot of people of all kinds all over the country are fed up with this stuff. They're sick of the wars of aggression. They're sick of seeing the United States constantly attack other countries, create chaos and destruction in other countries, while doing nothing about the chaos and destruction that's being created by our capitalist elite here. Flint, Flint was mentioned. People are sick of it. How do I know people are sick of it? Because every single successful presidential candidate over the last 20 years has been elected on the promise to stop doing it. To stop or reduce American interventions overseas. Every one of them knew they had to make that promise in order to get elected. And of course, every one of them was lying. They were lying either directly to us or they were lying uh, to themselves about what they could accomplish. So that's going to be the case. We're going to have to keep coming back. Now, the other good news is what Cindy Sheehan said. The people of Venezuela are opposing this. They're fighting this. And, and our job here is to support them, to put as much disruption in the way as possible in the way of what these people over here are trying to do. We may not be, a, be our being here today may not stop Bolton and Trump from doing something tomorrow, but it will help to end and disrupt whatever they want to do. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So say no coup in Venezuela. Yeah. 
No coup in Venezuela. No coup in Venezuela. No coup in Venezuela. Down a little bit more in your face. So I am with the group Code Pink and my co-director here, Jody Evans. We were in Venezuela several times. We saw with our own eyes what was happening during the time of the Bolivarian Revolution when there were so many gains for the poor and the working class. We saw how Chavez was giving out land to the indigenous people that was rightly theirs and finally they were given the legal title to that land. We saw how people who never had a chance to get an education, and certainly not a college education, were for the first times in their lives given access to college education for free, something we don't have in this country. Yes. We saw with our own eyes how the Cuban doctors and nurses were fanning out across the rural areas of Venezuela that had never had doctors and nurses before, that had never had access to free good health care, something we don't have in the United States of America. Yes. We also saw something else, which was that the spirit of the Bolivarian Revolution was spreading all over Latin America. We saw it with governments that were progressive, people-centered governments going all the way from Brazil and Argentina through Central America. And we saw how Venezuela was championing a relationship with those countries through something called ALBA. Raise your hand if you've heard of ALBA. So some of you have and others of you haven't. ALBA was a solidarity kind of uh, of uh, economic relationship between countries of Latin America that were not uh, gearing their economies towards corporate profits, but were gearing their economies towards how do they help the people. And it was a beautiful thing to see how the resources of different countries were going to help the poorest countries of Latin America. And this is something that the U.S. could not tolerate. This is something that the U.S. said, it's bad enough to see a redistribution of resources in Venezuela, but we can't allow the resources to be spread around Latin America because the model of a socialism, socialist system that worked is something that the U.S. was always against which is why they tried the coup in 2002, and it's why they're trying the coup as we speak today. Right. It is why they took somebody who was never elected president by one person in Venezuela, Juan Guaido, and said, this guy is gonna be the president. And they're saying that this is somehow democratic as against the six million people who voted for Maduro. And it's why when they declared Juan Guaido and a bunch of their puppets here in Washington, D.C., that we got up in front of their press conferences to say these people have absolutely no legitimacy. Right. Yes. Well, that didn't work, so a month later, they tried using humanitarian aid as a weapon of war, and that didn't work either. And now they were gloating about a blackout in Venezuela that has jeopardized the lives of so many people, and you see people like Marco Rubio acting as if that was a wonderful thing because it was going to bring down the government. There is nobody in that White House or in this administration that cares at all for the Venezuelan people. That has been so clear by the sanctions that they have introduced that are designed precisely to strangle the economy and designed to make life miserable for the Venezuelan people. But we are here to say that we are absolutely against economic sanctions, yes. that we are absolutely against the economic warfare this government yeah. is waging on Venezuela. 
and we are absolutely opposed to any type of U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. Yeah. There is a bill in Congress right now that it's important for us to support, introduced by Congressman David Cicilline, that says no to an unauthorized U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. Right. It's called H.R. 1004. It now has 53 co-sponsors of it. And given the representatives we have in Congress, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> but we need that to grow. So all of you, when you go home, one thing you can certainly do is get your congressperson to support H.R. 1004, yeah. no military intervention in Venezuela. Yes! So on behalf of Code Pink, on behalf of women throughout this country that are trying to end the militarization of U.S. foreign policy, on behalf of, of all peace-loving people in this country, including this beautiful crowd here, we say, we will do everything possible to stop our country from waging this war on Venezuela. And we say, as we've been saying all these months, hands off Venezuela, hands off Venezuela, hands off Venezuela, hands off Venezuela. Let's thank Code Pink again, and let's also thank them for making sure that Washington, D.C. is not a sanitized zone for these warmongers and these coup mongers and the interventions they've been making in these false panels and think tanks all around this city designed to build support for regime change. So thank you again, Code Pink, for joining us here today. Yeah. Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Next, I'd like to bring up the National Coordinator of the Answer Coalition, Brian Becker. How, how long? Two minutes, okay. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, uh, it's great to see so many people, so many organizers coming such long distances to be here in Washington, D.C. I want to say very briefly that the purpose of this mobilization is not simply to have a one-time event, but to inaugurate a nationwide movement that can say that the United States government, whether it's Trump or the equally imperialist Democrats, have no right, no capacity, no competence to tell the people of Venezuela who their president is and what their government should look like. Right. Only Venezuela can determine the destiny of Venezuela. We're gonna, we're gonna march from here in a little while. We have great speakers coming up. We're gonna march from here. We're gonna march to the Trump Hotel. Yeah, let's, let's impose some sanctions on the rich and powerful rather than the other way around. We're going to march where there are people throughout Washington, D.C. who will be receptive and want to hear this message that challenges the racist, imperial, dominant narrative that's spoon-fed to the people of this country by all the corporate mainstream media, be they liberal or conservative, they're all loyal to empire. We're bringing a different message, the message of solidarity. I stood here, I stood here almost to this day, 16 years ago, three years before the Bush administration invaded Iraq. That was 16 years ago, almost to the day. What preceded the war against Iraq, a war that took a million lives, 
What preceded it was the widespread demonization of the Iraqi government to prepare the population for the next aggression. When we stand here today, what do we see in common between what happened 16 years ago, today, and today? Iraq had the second largest reserve of oil in the Middle East, and Venezuela has the largest reserves of oil in the world. This is not about human rights. It's not about democracy. It's not about anything other than the control of Venezuela's oil and resources. Will it be for Venezuelans, for the poor, for the working population, or will it be for ExxonMobil and Goldman Sachs? That's what the issue is. Let's reject demonization. Let's build a movement when we get to our final destination today, which will be New York Avenue Presbyterian Church, where there will be coffee and sandwiches. We're going to talk about what comes next to build this movement. We're going to be joined by Jill Stein and Daniel Ellsberg, Max Blumenthal, and others to build a giant, mighty movement for peace and justice. Can we do this? Can we do it? Hands off Venezuela! We want money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Since 2010, 
23 states have passed racist voter suppression laws that represent just another barrier for us participating in the political process. As a person who grew up in Florida, I know firsthand how the election was stolen to elect warmonger George W. Bush in 2000, and how the DNC rigged, under Zionist Debbie Wasserman Schultz, rigged the presidential election in 2016 for warmonger Hillary Clinton. That's right. I recently got back from Venezuela, and what I experienced in my two weeks there truly astonished me. While the racist, capitalist class de declared a humanitarian crisis there. All I could think about is the real humanitarian crisis faced by our people in the United States. I did not even see homeless people in Venezuela. Meanwhile, in the United States, homelessness is growing like by leaps and bounds. Right. Today, there are more than 64 million people working for less than $15 an hour, while the top 10 per stop 1% of our country uh, uh, owns more than doubled of 20% of our national income. 13.8 million households in this country face unaffordable water bills, and at least 4 million families with children are being exposed to high levels of lead from drinking water and other sources. Thousands have died every year because some states' decisions to deny Medicaid expansion. More than 250 thousand people in the United States die each year from poverty related causes. We are here to denounce the hypocrisy of the United States government. We are here to say that we will not be complicit in the brutality of this imperialist war machine. There will not be another Iraq. We will not allow for the tentacles of capitalism and imperialism and its systems of oppression to invade, rape, pillage and exploit. We will not stand by while the U.S. government strangles the economy of the Venezuelan people and steals $7 billion a year to cause civil unrest in Venezuela right. as a result of economic basic resources resulting from economic sanctions. Today we stand in solidarity with Venezuela and its Bolivarian revolution. Today we defend the people's right to decide their own destiny without any type of U.S. intervention. Yes. Venezuela is an example of the power that we have when we align ourselves with the poor and dispossessed over greed and consumption for the sake of the collective future of our society, our precious earth, and our very souls. The same hell that marginalized and poor communities with the United States borders is catching the same hell in the West with the support of the spineless corporate media and a weaponized Silicon Valley that's doling it out to countries around the world. The devastation witnessed in countries like Iraq, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Puerto Rico, whose only real crime is being rich in natural resources, are reasons why we must say hands off Venezuela. And we cannot ever forget Haiti, the first true republic that taught us all about freedom. And they are still suffering the consequences of daring to liberate themselves from the system of enslavement which fueled the economies of so many imperialist countries in the West. When we say hands off Venezuela, we know that it's to support the democracy in Venezuela and it also means to support the democracy in Haiti. That's right. In the building and sustaining of the workers' political project in Venezuela, they have ensured free education at all levels of engagement of the formal education process. From the beginning of their educational journey, they are supported with free meals, uniforms, textbooks, writing utensils, art supplies, and even a cute little backpack. At the university level, they have access to free public education, daily transportation from even the most rural areas, textbooks, and free food. They have enacted free health care, supplemental income for mothers and families, low-income housing that have allowed families to stay in their communities, and have access to housing in the city at national, state, and local levels with community-based cooperatives. The Bolivarian Revolution is a lighthouse of hope for the continent and for the world. It is a reminder and an affirmation that the people, the poor and dispossessed of this world, 
are able to organize and build revolutionary projects to imagine our interests and imagine what our future needs to be. We cannot afford to lose Venezuela. So the call is to educate, organize, and mobilize for our communities and to connect the struggles of our people with people around the world. So let's leave this place with a commitment to build solidarity at all levels and continue to denounce and work towards ending the atrocities of this government in the United States at home and abroad. Thank you so much. bring up someone who I've had the privilege in being in struggle with, unfortunately, around many of these wars and interventions. And like we've been saying all day, it's the same script from Iraq to Libya to Venezuela today. And I want to next bring to the microphone another, it's a lot of my personal heroes here at this rally today, Imam Mahdi Bray, the executive director of the American Muslim Alliance. Please give it up for Imam Mahdi Bray. All right, all right. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, we need peace. That's what we need, not war. We need peace. Let me say, my brothers and sisters, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So we say, we say to our brothers and sisters in New Zealand, to Venezuela, we're standing for justice today. We're standing for justice today. You know, I remember Martin Luther King when he used to say that, you know, there were, he used to talk, teach the teaching of a Palestinian activist from Nazareth. He said, blessed are the peacemaker. He didn't say, blessed are the military industrial complex. He didn't say, blessed are the war criminals. He didn't say, blessed are those who want to rob the people in Venezuela for oil, because this is what it's about. It's a war for all. That's right. So, it's, so you know, we, we, our fight is one fight, the same fight that massacred people in New Zealand, Muslims praying in a mosque for white supremacy, the same White supremacy is behind the same thing that they're trying to do in Venezuela. It's one struggle, folks. It's one struggle. It's one struggle. And so we say, clear, we say clearly, you know, there are two, what's the, these war criminals? You want to come in? Pompeo, yeah, yeah. so okay. Elliot Abram, oh. and, uh, what's the other one? Pence, yeah. All the Trump and all these war criminals, they are telling their lies wearing a patriotic disguise, uh, okay. trying to hide, you know, but we see you. We know what you're about. We know about you about, we know about your lies. And we say, I'm glad, I'm so glad that you know, despite the lies, that truth crushed to the earth, still rise. And still we rise. We rise to say, hands off, Venezuelans. We rise to say, no wars for oil. We rise to say, no to US war intervention and imperialistic wars that spend billions of dollars, billions of dollars and billions of dollars on war and devastation, and we'll spend war to help poor people and give education. No, no. So we say, today we rise, we rise, we rise like the sun, right. and our day will keep on and we'll march on like the sun. We'll rise, we'll rise. And
until our day is done and we'll keep marching and we'll keep That's fighting right. Right. until victory, until right. victory is won, right. is won, is won. Hands off, Venezuelans. Hands off, Venezuela. Hands off, Venezuela. Washington, D.C., but around the country to come out here in the belly of the beast this morning and say no to war in Venezuela. I suppose you're thinking the same thing I am, which is that considering the gang that has taken over the White House, anything is possible. I remember when President Trump ran promising to end regime change wars and correctly saying that the war in Iraq was a mistake. And then he turned around and filled the White House up with individuals like John Bolton and Elliot Abrams. People, yeah, you can let them know how we feel. People who have been overthrowing governments and destroying countries for decades. He couldn't even come up with anybody new to do it. And this has created a situation of terror in Venezuela, I can tell you. I was just there. And I spoke with many people who are horrified, actually afraid, that they could soon face a U.S. military intervention. I spoke with one friend, a fellow journalist, who actually broke down crying to me. She said, we watched the United States destroy Libya. We watched the United States destroy Syria. And I never thought that I would be afraid of the same scenario playing out in my country. That's the level of psychological warfare the United States is already waging on the people there. It's terrifying. We had that conversation about two days before the United States did attempt to invade Venezuela. We shouldn't be afraid to say that's what happened on Jan uh, February 23rd when the U.S. orchestrated a media circus on the border with Colombia with its trucks of humanitarian aid, hoping to create the pretext for further military intervention. It didn't happen because Venezuela was prepared to fight. Venezuela withstood, resisted, and attempted U.S. military intervention. And that's why we're all here to say that we don't want to see any future attempts at that, but we need to recognize that the war on Venezuela is already being waged. It's been waged for years. I don't believe we're going to see, and maybe I'm hopeful, I don't believe we're going to see an Iraq-style invasion happen again, not in Venezuela or anywhere else. Instead, we've entered this new phase of 21st century warfare where the battlefield is in the media and the economy. The United States is waging a war on Venezuela through international capital and finance. I witnessed the effects of this first firsthand while I was in Venezuela. We're told that there's a humanitarian crisis. I was in Gaza last year. I saw what a humanitarian crisis looks like, one that is actually enabled by the same government which claims to care about Venezuelans. What I saw in Venezuela was nothing like what I saw in Gaza. However, there is an economic crisis, and that's a direct result, the intentional result, of U.S. policy. Yeah. So. 
one final thing I just want to say is that when I was at rallies with the opposition, the people who are now uh, showing up here to try and shut us down, when I was with them in Caracas, they all admitted that their, their demonstrations were much smaller and weaker than they'd been in years past. But they also all told me that they were confident this time they would see a change in regime. And when I asked them why, it was because they, they, would, they would say, because of Donald Trump and because the United States is backing us in a way they never have before. That told me two things. Juan Guaido will only ride into power in Caracas on the back of a U.S. tank. And the Venezuelan opposition's confidence doesn't come from the streets of Caracas, it comes from the streets of Washington, D.C. But they must have been confused, they must have been thinking about the elites, because I'm looking at the streets right now and I see people who say no, no war in Venezuela, we need humanitarian aid here in a country where over 40 million people live in poverty before we start worrying about Venezuela. But we need to be clear, the war on Venezuela has already begun. We need to say, stop the sanctions and the financial terrorism and keep the, our hands off Venezuela. Right? Hands off. That was Anya Panfell of the Gray Zone Project. Bookmark that, write it down, or whatever you do. A lot of great reporting coming from there in Venezuela. Sisters and brothers, just because the CNN and Washington Post, they turned a blind eye towards the history of U.S. intervention, of U.S. aggression and imperialism in Latin America, doesn't mean that we don't know that history, doesn't mean that we've forgotten it. Just because Trump might not actually know it, doesn't mean that our communities haven't experienced it. And our next speakers are going to speak about that history. Please welcome Roberto Villarroel Quesada and Basilio Buendia from El Movimiento al Socialismo Más y PSP from Bolivia. ¡Viva la coalición de movimientos sociales de Estados Unidos! Un saludo fraternal y revolucionario de nuestro presidente Evo Morales de, 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 eh, de Bolivia. Ah. We sent you comradely greetings from Bolivia. English is shorter. <laughs> Compañeros, es irresponsable tomar por la fuerza un país que ha decidido democráticamente ser feliz. It's irresponsible to think that you can go into another country and intervene when they're in, on their happiness. Las desestabilizaciones informáticas que hoy está generando la oposición lo hace tan irresponsable porque quieren tomar las riquezas de nuestra querida Venezuela. The destabilization that's happening in Venezuela is irresponsible, and it's only because they want to exploit the resources of Venezuela. No podemos permitir que un irresponsable como Guaidó asuma la economía ilegal de los fondos de Venezuela. We can't allow an irresponsible person like Guaido to allow the exploitation and the theft of the resources of Venezuela. Sabemos que el socialismo ha tenido éxito a través de la administración política, económica y social de nuestro presidente indígena Evo Morales. We know that socialism has benefited our people in Venezuela. The work of Evo Morales has benefited our communities. Ahora se reúnen los países neoliberales que hoy están matando de hambre a toda Argentina, Brasil, Ecuador, Lima y todos los países que una, con administraciones neoliberales no asumen una responsabilidad social. Now these neoliberals are organizing against Latin America. They're organizing against Argentina. They're organizing against Brazil. That's right. And South America. And we have to say no. Viva la unidad de los estadounidenses laborales. Long live the solidarity in the United States.
fraterno de parte de los representantes que aquí estamos presentes, los bolivianos. A nombre de Bolivia, ¡Viva Evo Morales! Comradely greetings from us in Venezuela. I'm sorry, from Bolivia, our sisters and brothers in Bolivia. Comradely greetings to the United States. Aquí estamos los originarios indígenas dándoles superioridad gobernando a todos los países neoliberales para poder sacar adelante a todos los pobres del mundo. Here we are, indigenous people, showing that we can govern, showing the rest of the world, putting the world to shame, and governing our own country. Bolivia está capacitada política y sindicalmente porque nosotros, los bolivianos, hemos sufrido en sangre propia porque allá en Bolivia había hambre, miseria, tortura, golpes de Estado. Ya no queremos más golpes de Estado en ningún otro país del mundo. In Bolivia, we've suffered hunger, we've suffered from coups, we've suffered from the brutality, from the torture, but not anymore. We're putting a stop to that. Por eso el Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia hoy en día es de las mejores de la región económicamente. Seis años consecutivos con la mejor economía. That is why our government in Bolivia is so strong right now. That is why our economy is growing and strengthening because of these policies. También tenemos riqueza. Por eso a Bolivia también no sé qué sorpresas tendrán. Pero el boliviano está preparado para defender hasta con la muerte. And we have resources. And more importantly, we have people who are willing to sacrifice their lives for their freedom. Viva Venezuela! Viva Bolivia! Venezuela no está solo. Estamos aquí para defender. Lovely Venezuela. Venezuela is not alone. We are here to support you. Viva Bolivia! Viva Bolivia! Gracias! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Thank you again from the comrades from Bolivia, which is continuing to fight along with the other Alba countries, along with many of the tiny Caribbean islands. Next, I want to bring all the way from Boston, Teresa, who's an activist there, working with the Answer Coalition, and who is also a Venezuelan. Marco Teresa. Hi, everyone. Um, I was born and raised in Caracas, Venezuela until the age of 10. As a proud Venezuelan, I'm here today to stand in solidarity with the working class people in my country. I am here to honor our history, our people, and the legacy of all freedom fighters that have come before us. I'm not here today to speak for the masses in Venezuela, but rather to connect their struggle here in the U.S. with the Venezuelan people on the ground, organizing in los barrios y en las comunas. In 1989, working class Venezuelans went out to protest to what was called El Caracaso against the neoliberal policies that led to increasing gas prices and bus fares. Today, we see the elites attempted to reestablish the same oppressive system of domination and exploitation that gave rise to the Bolivarian Revolution, one that has fought for over 20 years with over 500 years of anti-colonial legacy since Huaycaipuro. The Bolivarian Revolution substantially decreased poverty and homelessness alongside building free public education for all Venezuelans. Even through the conditions of crippling sanctions and economic war since the Obama administration, the people continue to build and organize. Yeah. 
equipo de Puerto Rico, Haiti, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and many more. We must continuously speak up against attempts from the U.S. to overthrow leftist government across the global south, alongside building revolutionary power that aims to, world, to build a world without war and exploitation, a world for all of us. It only requires us to look at history to know that the U.S. has funded military coups across our people's nations. The 1954 U.S. funded military coup in Guatemala, the 1973 military U.S. back coup in Chile, killing socialist president Salvador Allende and bringing the brutal dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet, the 1979 U.S. funded contra war in Nicaragua in opposition to the socialist Sandinista National Liberation Front. It is imperative that we, as communities and individuals, recognize the connections and systems of imperialism, capitalism, and settler colonialism that fails to recognize the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe in Soko, Massachusetts, the one that gentrifies communities in Dorchester, Harlem, and Congress Heights, or the same ones that force families and children in Central America to flee war and migrate here to the U.S. Y'all all right out there? Woo! You feeling OK? You not tired? No. Hands off. No. Hands off. No. Hands off. No. Hands off. No. Now, next, I want to bring up someone who also came from very far. We're going to opposite ends of the eastern seaboard, all the way from Atlanta, in fact, to be here with us today, the national coordinator of the Malcolm X grassroots movement, Sister Taliba Abuya. Thank you. Free to land. Free to land. Free to land. By any means necessary. The people must decide. The people must decide. The people have decided. I bring greetings on behalf of the New African People's Organization and the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement. I honor the legacy and the resistance of my ancestors and the revolutionary spirit of the New Africans Independence Movement. I am Talibo Obuya. The self-determination of Venezuela is directly tied to the liberation of the black nation in this U.S. empire. And we must stand with them.
In 2018, the New African People's Organization and the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement stood in solidarity with the Venezuelan people and observed when, as they prepared to elect their president. We observed the elections in Venezuela, which resulted in the election of President Nicolas Maduro and the Bolivian Revolution. With heart and mind, we condemn the assault of the sovereignty of the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela by the Trump Prince regime and their allies in satellite states in the region. Nicolas Maduro was was elected by President Biden overwhelmingly 68% of the popular vote. Repeat that, y'all, 68% of the vote. 68% of the vote. The people must decide. The people must decide. The people have decided. The Venezuelan masses continue to support the Bolivian Revolution in spite of these U.S. imposed sanctions and economic destabilization. The revolution has made significant impact on the lives and the social well-being of the working and poor Venezuelans. The revolution has committed the resources of the country to benefit the working, the working masses, and the poor, created space for women, indigenous, and African descendants to voice and express their rights and achieve economic and cultural development. In the spirit of Hugo Chavez, the Bolivian revolution has also promoted international solidarity in the region and oppressed people in under the nations around the globe so we must support the people right. we consider we consider the Trump Pence opposition and the denial of the Bolivian political process as a continual assault on the sovereignty and self-determination of Venezuela we call for an opposition to the sanctions of the US Empire and any efforts of any military intervention and destabilization against the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela so we must support the people. 68%. The people must decide. And we must stand on the side of the people and on the side of self-determination. In the anti-war tradition of the Black Liberation Movement and in the spirit of Ida B. Wells, Martin Luther King, and Muhammad Ali, we call for no U.S. intervention. We call for the elimination of sanctions on Venezuela, economics, and any other form of warfare on the people of Venezuela. We also demand the Cong Congressional Black Caucus to oppose Donald Trump's efforts to destabilize Venezuela and to create a coup in violation of the Latin American country's right to sovereignty and self-determination by voting for the H.R. 1004 prohibiting unauthorized military action in Venezuela Act. Our members are out amongst you all, and we are here and asking for signatures to sign on to that. We ask you to sign on to organize and demand, hands off Venezuela! Hands off Venezuela! Hands off Venezuela! Let's be free. Thank you. Sisters and brothers, do you believe in self-determination? Are you tired of endless wars and foreign occupation? Yes. Do you think Trump gives a rat's ass about humanitarian aid in yeah. Latin America? Then you're going to love our next speaker. <laughs> Please welcome Heather Benno of the Answer Coalition. Woo! Adelante. Thank you, sisters, and thank you to all of you for being out here today. As Karina said, my name is Heather. I'm with the Answer Coalition. I'm an Iraqi American anti-imperialist activist right here in Washington, D.C. And I know each and every one of you are anti-imperialist too or else you wouldn't be out here today saying hands off Venezuela, no more coup, no more sanctions, and no war. <laughs> working people right here in the United States. The war against the caravan of immigrants coming up from Honduras, El Salvador, across Central America. The war against our brothers and sisters
continued form of theft. It's like stealing from the poorest, the most uh, in need Venezuelans who rely on government support. So we're here today saying that we're going to build this movement without corporate support. Unlike the right-wingers, we don't have the corporate media behind us. Unlike the right-wingers, we don't own the food production facilities in Venezuela. We don't own the mainstream newspapers and radio stations and television stations. We have to struggle, make our signs, paint our banners, get our brothers and sisters into the streets in order to be seen and heard because we don't have the same corporate support. But what you can do here today is contribute to this movement. You can, you know, through your feet by marching, but also by donating. And right now you'll see buckets going around in the crowd. We're going to ask people to donate as generously as possible to continue to build this movement so we can pay for the stage, pay for the sound, pay for the signs and the banners that we need to be seen from around the world. And because we're, you know, modern anti-imperialists, you can use cash, you know, we can take change, but we can also take Venmo. I want to let people know you can donate on Venmo at answer-coalition. You can also donate on PayPal. It's paypal.me slash answer coalition. And then again, you will see red buckets going around in, in the park right now and it's your opportunity to contribute. So, I just want to remind everybody that together we can stop the sanctions. Right. Together we can stop empire. So stand with us in the streets and build the movement. Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! We got a few more people to come up and then we're gonna march. I hope y'all are ready for that. Yeah. I don't know, it's a little weak. Are y'all ready for that? Yeah. Okay, that's a little better. Next, I wanna bring up Jewel Chun of the 21st Century Institute. Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! My talk will be short in three messages first which government which regime first and foremost must be changed is it in venezuela or in washington is it in iraq or in in, in washington dc everybody knows this is the regime the gangster regime must be regime changed not the regime in Venezuela, not the regime in Korea, not the regime in Iran. The second message, the world is different from the past. The world is different from the 1990s or the 2000s. The people in the world, the people in Venezuela, the people in Korea, people in Iran will not allow the Washington regime will dare to regime change. No more. That's right. No more regime change. That's right. So the message. Do you believe that this neocon gangster regime in DC will win in their regime change in Venezuela? No. Do you believe? No. Who will win then? People of Venezuela. People of the world will win, not the Washington regime. This is the 500 years ever more same, the gangster, the imperialist power of the world. People will win. People of Venezuela will win. Hands up! Venezuela! I want you to please give a warm welcome our next speaker. We're so honored to have today a longtime activist and leader with the Black Alliance for Peace. Please make some noise for Nefa Freeman. Greetings, sisters and brothers. 
I'm actually here to give a statement on behalf of our brother Ajamu Baraka, the national organizer of the Black Alliance for Peace, who can't be here today because he's trapped in Venezuela. He went there on a delegation and, well, you'll hear about what happened in the statement. So on behalf of Ajamu Baraka, comrades, brothers and sisters, I bring you revolutionary greetings from the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela on this day of struggle and resistance as we collectively call for all power to the people. I wish that I could have been there physically today, but in a cowardly act of imperialist intrigue, the pilots of American Airlines joined the U.S. State Department in its efforts to create the impression of crisis in Venezuela. And so now members of our peace delegation have been forced to seek alternative paths back to the U.S. that will take literally days. But the story today is not about us, about, it's about you gathered in the fundamental solidarity with the struggling people of Venezuela. With your presence, you have struck a blow against the myth that, the sectors of the pop, that all sectors of the population support the mad plans of Trump and his supporters in the Democratic Party. With your presence today, it will be a reminder to the people of Venezuela, who we made aware of today's event, that you are standing with them. With your presence, you say to the world that there are people in this country, this plantation, that, un that understand their historic task to resist from the belly of the beast, the bloodthirsty plans of the predatory colonial imperialist U.S. European Union NATO axis of domination. Over the course of the last few days, our delegation has seen much, but we did not see a crisis in the government of Venezuela. The crisis that we did see in Venezuela is not the crisis of socialism or the Bolivarian process. We saw, we, what we saw was the crisis of imperialism an imperialism unable to conquer the, and humiliate and degrade the proud people of Venezuela. We want to thank the Answer Coalition for its leadership pulling this together and call on all to join the Black Alliance for Peace and all forces to continue to concentrate our forces in order to better organize the resistance to U.S. imperialism. Black Alliance for Peace will be back in D.C. in two weeks as we focus our resistance until March 30th on, to link to the link between NATO and Venezuela as we target the insulting decision by NATO to commemorate its 70th anniversary, April 4th, on the day that sh they struck down Dr. Martin Luther King in Memphis. Please continue to support Black Alliance for Peace program to shut down AFRICOM and our upcoming campaign that will launch April 4th highlighting the link between U.S. Mater and militarism abroad and the war being waged against black and brown people and working class domestically. We say at the Black Alliance for Peace, not one drop of blood of black and brown people and the working class to defend the interests of capitalist dictatorship. Make the issue of war and U.S. imperialism the litmus test for who is really a progressive in the United States. Stand for justice, fight for peace, victory until death. Ajamo Baraka, Caracas, Venezuela. And thank you to the Black Alliance for Peace and Solidarity with all those like Ajama who have been stuck there. Next, I want to bring up a true frontline struggler for the rights of working class and oppressed people, one of our best popular leaders here in the District of Columbia as well, the Reverend Graylin Hagler, Senior Minister at Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. I'm glad that you're out here. Because one thing that is important when folks talk about those of us who are radically progressive, the fact is, is that we continue to speak to the issues not in a sentimental fashion, but in a historical context, for we understand what imperialism looks like in the context of history and what it's always meant. So we don't engage in the sentimentality that often folks want to lead us into, like the press talking about the humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. Well, how did the humanitarian crisis become the humanitarian crisis? And who do you expect to fix the humanitarian crisis? That's like from our theological tradition, inviting the devil in to fix your sin. We stand here as people of conscience and understanding, because we were out around to try to stop an invasion of Iraq. We were right then, and we're right now. We stood up years before that, around intervention around the Contras, if y'all remember that, and crack cocaine 
flooded the black community in order to fund the Contras to carry out an illegal war. We were right in opposing it then, we're right today. We're right today in imposing and opposing any intervention in Venezuela whatsoever. You can't fix it because you broke it, the United States of America, broke it. Every since, particularly in modern time, Hugo Chavez, America understood that it was a struggle between the poor and the rich, the black and the brown and the white. There is a racial dynamic all around the world, and we need to wake up to it and call it for what it is, that it's always been racism that has fueled imperialism. It has always been racism that has fueled the oppression all through South America, all through Central America, even in the Caribbean, and even in Africa. We say no to war. Get your hands off Venezuela. God bless you. for black people. It is not democracy for women, for queer people, for trans people. So what do we have to do? We have to start with the struggle here. We have to fight to unite the workers and the oppressed here because death to imperialism starts in the heart of the empire. And if that means, if that means that we have to go down with it, so be it. Occupy the banks, occupy the White House, occupy the streets. This is a life or death struggle. And the global revolutionary class struggle is the only, only, only hope for humanity. Right. So we have to fight and we have to start now. And the revolutionary left has to be a united fist. No sanctions, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no sanctions, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no sanctions, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no sanctions, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no sanctions, no coup. Venezuela, we stand with you, no sanctions, no coup. I just liked how y'all sounded, so I wanted to listen to that a little bit. Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! 
Next, I want to bring up someone who also, you may have seen, was helping to bust a lot of the lies in the past, even few weeks, that we're hearing in the United States over and over and over again about Venezuela. I want to welcome to the microphone Max Blumenthal, the editor of GrayZone.com, recently back from the Venezuela on the ground. Beautiful crowd. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Answer, Code Pink, everybody who showed up to represent. Um, and thank you to those cats. Just take a look at the puppet factory over there. What a bunch of puppets. I haven't seen so many puppets since I was a kid and I watched Sesame Street. I wish Jim Henson was here today. Oh my God. I mean, can you imagine showing up in front of the White House to ask them to invade your country? That's what they have been reduced to, and I'm gonna talk about why. Because I went to Venezuela with my team at the Gray Zone, Aaron Mate, Ben Norton, Anya Parampil, to break the media blockade, to break this monotonous narrative that's drumming up a humanitarian intervention, and we saw something totally different than they were showing you on every network, including Fox News, who's here today. Thank you. Hey, hey, at least they're here. Where is the CIA news network? I mean, CNN. Where are they at? Where is Rachel Maddow? She's talking about, like, w Russia hacking the weather. Okay, so at least, at least Fox is here, okay? What we saw, among many things that are very different from is being portrayed, is a reality show coup fall apart before our very eyes. Raise your hand if before January 2nd you'd heard of Juan Guaido. I don't see a lot of hands. I don't see a lot of hands. And that means you're like a lot of Venezuelans who had never heard of him, and you're like the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo who referred to him as Juan Guido when he first talked about him. Like, hey, hey, I'm Juan Guido. Hey, let's do a coup in my country. Bada boom, bada bing. No, it wasn't like that, Pompeo. What we saw when we were there on February 23rd was the U.S. attempt to ram through humanitarian aid on trucks and the riot squad of Warimbas actually burned the U.S. aid, and little Marco Rubio, who was on the Colombian border at 3 a.m. with very busy thumbs at 3 a.m. on the Colombian border, like the final scene of Scarface, <laughs> little Marco blamed the Maduro government for burning those trucks. And what we showed at the gray zone, along with brave Venezuelan reporters, including our friends from Telesur, is the lie, is the lie that they tried to deploy to escalate a conflict and spark an intervention. And what we also saw walking through the barrios, like 23 Enero, like walking through Comuna Panal, walking through the communities of Caracas, was the conscience of the Venezuelan people who are mobilizing on a popular level against this coup. It's because of them and because of their conscience that this coup has failed. It's not because of some dictator in his back cave with some computers. It's because of the conscience of the Venezuelan people that they stood up during an electrical blackout that was designed to destabilize their society and they pooled together and they helped each other find water and they helped each other charge their phones and they came together as a community to stand up against the most powerful empire in history and the worst economic war we've seen directed against another country and they have emerged victorious. They control the streets of Venezuela and that's why this puppet factory is in front of the White House to beg for US F-16s to give them democracy in the form of IMF loans and human rights in the form of another Libya, another Syria, another Iraq. It ain't gonna happen. So we have a role here. I know I was supposed to have two minutes, but I love the sound of my voice, I'm sorry. Our role here is to be the conscience of our own society when some of our socialist politicians are not standing up and saying very clearly, hands off Venezuela, and they're kind of playing both sides. It's our role to be that conscience. It's our role and our responsibility to protect the Venezuelan people when sociopaths in the White House are calling for a war under the auspices of responsibility to protect. It's our role to show that we command the streets, not the elites. It's our role to show that these are our streets and that we need humanitarian aid in our streets. Whose streets? Whose streets? Whose streets? 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 Hands off! Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you again, Max, for everything you've done. Next, I want to bring someone who has also been working diligently, but often very humorously as well, to explode so many of the lies that have existed around Venezuela and so much else that the oligarchic people in charge of the so-called politicians have done. I want to bring up Lee Camp to say a few words for us. Hello, thank you for being out here. You pumped up? Yes. You pumped up? Yes. You excited to march? We're gonna march here in a minute. You ready? Yes. All right, I'm gonna keep this very short. I think there's like one speaker after me and then we're getting out of here. And we're gonna start moving it down the streets because these are our streets. Yes. It's so exciting to be here. And honestly, this, you know, this may seem like a dire time. They're pushing another war. They want to they wanna upend another country. And by the way, ask these people which country it is that U.S. has, has screwed with, has fucked with, that they want Venezuela to end up like. Do they want it to be Syria? Do they want it to be Libya? Do they want it to be Iraq? Is that what they want? The, you, the U.S. has not done any good for those countries that we have upended, okay? And furthermore, the fake facade of the reasons that we want to go in and upend Venezuela and create our U.S. back coup, it's all fallen away. The fake reasons are gone. So now you have John Bolton saying on Fox News that it's for the oil, all right? It's for the oil. It's for the power. It's not even, they can't even cover it up anymore. Like, they don't even know how to fake it. Like, for God's sakes, become better liars. Anyway, this is huge. You guys should be really excited, and we're gonna we're gonna end this we're gonna end this coup right now. All right, because the people of Venezuela should decide their fate, not the people in that building right there. All right, you ready to march? Who streets? Who streets? Who streets? streets? Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Redacted tonight. That's his show. I forgot to say it. Watch it every day. Who Street? Who Street? Sisters and brothers, our last speaker is the physical representation of that saying. This woman has dedicated her entire life, her entire life for fighting not just against U.S. wars abroad, but for fighting for people here, fighting for jobs, fighting for education, fighting for immigrant rights. Gloria Lariva from the Cuba Venezuela Solidarity Committee. She just came back. She spent a month in Venezuela. And she spent decades all over Cuba, all over the world, all over Latin America. She was on the bridge when those traitors were trying to get the US to come in and to invade, when they bombed their own trucks, just as an excuse, as a pretext to bring in more foreign military into Latin America. When those traitors were there, Gloria Lariva was there too. And she's been talking to people for the last month, and she's been organizing. And okay. let's put your hands together, please, for Gloria Lariva! Sisters and brothers, it's a great day today because we and people around the world are marching for Venezuela. I had the great privilege to be there during the blackout that took place. I was due to fly out at 7 p.m. Thursday. I was at the airport and the lights went out at 5. And I thought something happened at the airport. But within an hour, it was clear. It was the whole country. And it was shocking because we knew that we're in the middle of this aggression by the United States and wonder what's going to happen. All right, is there going to be bombing? Is there going to be troops? Is something else going to happen? What's going to happen to President Nicolas Maduro? We spent the night wondering. And then, just like the sun comes up every day, the people came out. It was a normal day. They went and did their, their work. It was not easy because they couldn't buy on their debit card the food that they needed. It wasn't easy because you had no communications. I took a mono taxi at 7 a.m. to the presidential palace because I figured there might be electricity there. And there was emergency power. And found out that it was a sabotage. This is what happened. And it kept happening. 
These heroic workers kept bringing back the power, and then it would fall another hour, and back up again. And today, I heard from my friend in Venezuela, because someone told me, a reporter said they heard that there's still a blackout there. He said, no, the power is restored, but the terrorists bombed an electrical plant in a middle class neighborhood. Terrorism. And in fact, there was a press conference by Delcy Rodriguez, the vice president of Venezuela, together with the, the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, in Moscow. Because Venezuela announced that their oil offices in Europe are moving to Moscow. They have to protect themselves. And Lavrov said the U.S. is buying weapons and shipping them to Venezuela, to Brazil, and to Colombia. What they plan is a mil partly a, military, a paramilitary war. The danger is on. When I was at the bridge of Tienditas on February 23rd with hundreds of young people ready to fight and defend their country, Freddy Bernal, the chief protector of Táchira State, because it's a dangerous area, he told the people, nerves of steel, nerves of steel. We will not fall into violence with the opposition. We will show, we will not let the U.S. have an excuse. And so today when we march, let's march solidly together. Pay attention. Make sure that we're militant, that we march at the whole city of Washington and the world hears us. stage right or stage left, so just follow my hands. In this direction, if you look in this direction, you'll see a banner. This is the direction we want to go towards. Obviously, you can see there are some right-wing opposition demonstrators to our right. We're going to avoid them, but we're going to go straight out here behind these banners out into Pennsylvania Avenue. So just follow that banner. Thank you. I'm looking forward to sitting with you in the streets. Hands off! Hands off! Hands off! Hands off. Hands off. Hands off. 